class number five in this eight-part series on introduction to spreadsheets. In this video, we're going to learn about creating graphical representations of spreadsheet data through the use of charts. This is one of the most popular and useful features of spreadsheets, and being able to produce visually interesting and informative charts from data is a key 21st century skill. So this is very useful stuff. We're only going to focus on the basics of chart creation here, and then zoom in on one kind of chart that's particularly useful for calculus students, namely the scatter plot. If you want to learn more about charts after this video is over, I'd suggest looking around for tutorials on the internet, and particularly on YouTube. There's some very good ones out there, and just playing around with what your spreadsheet can do. So let's return to our grocery budget example that we've seen in screencasts 2 and 4. Now here I've reset the monthly budget amount back to $500. Now remember in the last screencast we introduced absolute cell references. So all the calculations that are in the spreadsheet are now tied to one dollar amount, namely this one here at B1. If we change this amount, lots of other things are going to change too. Now let's focus in on the amounts we spend each week in April, which I have recorded here in column C. Now these are not calculations, these are uh, just manual records that I entered in by hand from my grocery receipts. I'd like to make a bar chart out of these numbers. This would be like a graph of a mathematical function with, say, the date on the x-axis and then a dollar amount on the y-axis and a solid bar that extends upward from each date going up to how much uh, I spent. Now I should warn you that the process we're about to do here to create this chart might look considerably different depending on the software you're using. Just for reference, I am using Excel 2007 on Macintosh. All full-feature spreadsheets will make the kind of chart we're about to make, whether you're using Excel on a, on a Windows machine or Google Spreadsheets or Numbers or OpenOffice Calc or anything else. But if your software doesn't look quite like this, then you'll just need to consult your user manual or just surf through the help menus to find out how it does work. Anyhow, to create the basic chart, I'm simply going to highlight these four data points by clicking and dragging over them. Then I'm going to go up to the menu bar here and click Insert and then chart. And when I do this, Excel gives me a big visual list and a little uh, text list up here of all the different kinds of charts I could possibly create. It's worth taking a second to look at all the variety I have available here. We have area charts, bar charts, uh, bubble charts, uh, something called a donut chart, all kinds of charts that work differently in different situations. For now, I'd like to create a bar chart, so I'm going to click on bar. Now, this isn't exactly what I wanted here. Excel wants bar charts uh, to have the bars going horizontally. I would like them to go straight up and down, so I don't think bar is exactly what I want. I see something called column over here. If I click on that, that's a little bit more what I want. The bars will be going up and down. Now, it looks like there's several different kinds of bar charts available here. Some are two-dimensional, some are three-dimensional. I'm going to choose the simplest one here just by clicking on it. And that's it. Uh, the chart is automatically inserted into the spreadsheet as a picture. I can resize this picture by clicking and dragging on the handles here on the top or the uh, edges as I just did. And if I right click on some aspect of the chart here, I get a context menu that allows me to do several different things. Uh, for example, if I choose format chart area, I get a menu that allows me to change the uh, physical attributes of this chart. Uh, for example, I can change the colors. I could change whether I have shadows in the uh, chart. I can change the fonts that I have here in, the, in any aspect of the text here. Uh, I'm going to leave it as it is for right now, although I do see uh, I do see here that uh, the x-axis didn't come out labeled exactly as I wanted. I just have 1, 2, 3, 4. What I really wanted to see was April 3rd, April 10th, April 17th, and April 24th. So I'm going to go right-click on my chart area again and choose Select Data. This is going to bring up a menu that, among other things, allows me to choose the category x-axis labels. That's what I want to change. If I click on the little icon over here, it's going to kick me back into the spreadsheet, and I can just highlight the data that I want, uh, the cells uh, A5 through A8 that I want for my labels. If I click the icon again, I see it's pasted in here. If I click OK, uh, the chart has changed considerably. Now I have uh, bars at April 3rd, April 10th, and so on. 
Now the nice thing about charts in a spreadsheet is that they too are linked to the data in the cells. For example, suppose I really messed up in my records here in uh, the first, in April 3rd and I actually meant to put $177 instead of just $77. That's a big mistake, but I can change that in the chart at least pretty easily. If I just change this to 177 and click, notice what happens in the chart. Ah, uh, the chart changed too. So the chart is a kind of calculation that is dynamically linked to the data in the spreadsheet. If I change some of my data, not only will the calculations that are in the spreadsheet change, but the chart will change too. Suppose I wanted to change this from columns to something else. Suppose I actually did want the bar chart that I wanted. So I could just click on this chart and go back and select bar and the simple one, and Excel will change that automatically. Now the ability to change the type of charts on the fly is nice, and it allows me to introduce to you a special kind of chart that's very useful for mathematical modeling, and that's called the scatter plot. A scatter plot is a chart where we're plotting data that have two coordinates, if you will, and each data point is plotted as a point in the xy plane. Now our grocery budget is actually like this. We have a date coordinate, which is thought of as the x coordinate, and an expense coordinate, which is thought of as a y coordinate. And we made a column chart. We saw this as x and y's. Now what I'd like to do is create a scatter plot for this. So let me change this. I have to go over here to click on this double arrow, and I see x, y, or scatter plot. Select it, and just choose this. And you see what a scatter plot really is. It's just the four dots that are my four data points. And here I have the x coordinate of the data, and here I have the y coordinate, uh, which are the dollar amounts. We can choose to leave the dots disconnected. I can connect them with a smooth curve. I can connect them with line segments. Or I can do either one of these without the dots present. Let's go back to just the dots. Now scatter plots are very useful anytime we are dealing with a data set that has an X and a Y coordinate. For example, here's a new spreadsheet, and I've entered into this some population data. This is the population of South Bend, Indiana over time from 1870 to 2000. This is taken from the United States Census Bureau. Uh, the population depends on time, so if I'm going to create a scatter plot, I'd like the x-axis to have the year in it and the y-axis to have the population amount in it. So I'm going to highlight both columns of data, including the headers, and then go insert chart and again select scatter plot. I'm just going to leave it as dots. I'm going to insert the scatter plot. There it is. Let me resize my window a little bit so we can see it. And there you have it, including the uh, title, which is given from the uh, spreadsheet as well. Notice that Excel understands the order in which the columns occur, and it put the right variables on the right axes. Now this chart shows us something about the behavior of the population that we might not have otherwise seen if we were just looking at the numbers. For example, we see a rapid increase in growth here between 1920 and 1930, followed by a decline, and a peak up here in 1960, followed by a decline, and then maybe a slight rise here at the end. Now to see how this might be useful in studying math, let's return to our example from screencast 4 that involved exponential functions. Here I have a cell where I've entered in the base of an exponential function and then a column of uh, outputs of y equals a to the x. Right now we're looking at y equals 2 to the x and you'll recall from spreadsheet 4 that I created this chart by using an absolute cell reference. So if I change this cell, the outputs will change. What I'd like to do is create a scatter plot for these data, so I'll just highlight everything and go to insert, chart, I'd like to create a scatter plot, this time with a smooth curve connecting the dots. And when I click the button, what I basically get is what you'd see if you used a graphing calculator to plot this function. Now what's really nice about this is that I can dynamically change the plot by changing the base cell right here. This uh, chart is a calculation that's using the data in this uh, spreadsheet in column B here to create the uh, curve and the dots. So if I change this, for example, to 0.5, chart changes too, and I'm looking at y equals one half to the x. I can immediately see that this is an exponential decay function, for example, versus an exponential growth function. If I change this, for example, to 0.9, I'm going to see uh, 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 another kind of exponential decay function, but very differently. So I can actually create dynamic, changeable graphs like I would see through a graphing calculator, but with a lot more interactivity. That's it for this screencast. As I said earlier, the charting capabilities in modern spreadsheets go very deep, and this video has really only scratched the surface. In the next video, though, we're going to see how scatter plots can be used to generate mathematical formulas from data, which can then be used in calculus operations. See you there.